We're trying to build a, the Bitcoin circular economy out and have more people around the world use Bitcoin only. You actually go ahead and say, no, no, our business is Bitcoin only. We only accept Bitcoin, no shit coins and no fiat currencies. The advantages so far outshine the disadvantages by a long shot for us. Um, I mean, the, the, the biggest one, obviously, uh, being the, the, the ease of doing business. We, we don't have to succumb to as much regulation as when you, when you have a fiat bank account. By accepting Bitcoin only, we, we don't have to operate in any specific jurisdiction, um, as long as someone can access our website and they're able to pay us through the Bitcoin network, they can use our service. We only pay people in Bitcoin as well, and that helps because now we're forced to only use uh, Bitcoin, it is basically, which is awesome. You can buy almost anything online using Bitcoin, and obviously BitRefill is also huge here. We have to get the Bitcoin circular economy as strong as possible, as soon as possible. Most Bitcoiners just haven't thought that far ahead yet, but as soon as they do, they'll they, they would realize that uh, spending and replacing your Bitcoin is very important. Bitcoin is supposed to be the peaceful revolution. And one of the reasons that I'm in Bitcoin is to give a finger to, to the regulators and to the rent seekers that are trying to control us. Austrian economics is actually the only economic system that, that has made any progress in the last 200 years because they're just like accepting reality and logic. I saw actually that you take Bitcoin only to, to another level. Uh, because most people that talk about Bitcoin only, they are like um, just having Bitcoin as their reserve currency, as their reserve asset in their their own personal balance sheet. But they usually still pay with, with fiat and they still uh, uh, accept fiat in their businesses and all those things. But you actually go ahead and say, no, no, our business is Bitcoin only. We only accept Bitcoin, no shit coins and no fiat currencies, which is a, a really big step. And uh, I love that, that you took, uh, they took that. But why did you take that? Like, why uh, not say like, oh, we, we also take business in, in, in fiat currencies? We're trying to, 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 to build a, the, the, the Bitcoin circular economy out and have uh, more people around the world use Bitcoin only. And I think that's just a natural step. Um, I mean, using Bitcoin only does come with uh, its advantages and its disadvantages. Um, but the advantages so far, I think, um, um, are, are outshines the disadvantages by, by, by a long shot for us. Um, I mean, the, the, the biggest one, obviously, uh, being the, the, the ease and the, uh, of, of doing business. We, <clears throat> we don't have to succumb to as much regulation as when you, when you have a fiat bank account. That's usually where they start tying the news. And also, um, by accepting Bitcoin only, we, we don't have to operate or have a footprint in any specific jurisdiction um, as long as someone can access our website and they're able to pass through the bitcoin network um, or through lightning they can use our service and i think that's a huge advantage man yeah i, I didn't even th thought about that thing because if you have just a bitcoin wallet that is completely separate from anything else that you're doing and you only accept bitcoin and there's like no no hint of that like you you can basically do it uh, com completely outside of the the fiat <laughs> traditional fiat uh system it's uh, I, I never thought about that uh point actually it's, it's really really cool but i guess it's uh it, it's still quite early to 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 do that is there any like hurdles that you have had to go through with adopt adopting bitcoin with maybe also with with paying uh things for for the the business how, how do you go about that yeah so i mean this is uh i think it's also another feature and not a bug so we we only pay people in bitcoin as well if so, and that helps because now we're forced to only use uh bitcoin it is basically which is awesome and um, um uh, uh, there has been a couple of uh, instances where someone um, wanted to, to do something for us. Um, um, we needed to pay them and we said, okay, we will use you, your service or whatever, but we can only pay in Bitcoin. And, and they said, then they, otherwise they wouldn't have thought about or had accepted Bitcoin. But now because we're taking that hard stance, they want the business. Um, we, uh, uh, they created Bitcoin and wanted to, uh, I've helped a couple of uh, um, people like that. And then they accept Bitcoin. Um, so that's also part of the adoption cycle, um, helping to onboard new people like that. That is interesting. It, it's really uh, cool to see with, with, with that uh, pa uh, pushing uh, this Bitcoin adoption forward. And you don't have, like if you pay everyone in Bitcoin and if you only accept Bitcoin, then you never have to like, have to have like sell your Bitcoin to fiat and then pay someone or to lend against it and all those things. 
Um, do you do personally also uh, uh, more this Bitcoin only approach or like, <laughs> can, can you do this even in, in your wherever you are? So in South Africa, um, it's definitely it would definitely be possible, and I try and to live on a Bitcoin standard to the largest extent possible for me, for myself. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the like the place that I rent, and I still have insurance, and um, like medi medical care, um, medical insurance as well. Sorry, uh, uh, that I need to pay in fiat. So stuff like that isn't isn't available. Um, and like a, the, the mainstream. Uh, uh, gym that I go to as well, stuff like that. It's, it's you can't pay for, you don't have a choice um, uh, to use Bitcoin for that. For us, everything else and a lot of other stuff in South Africa, we, you will be able, you, you'll be able to travel to, uh, through South Africa um, with Bitcoin only. So I, um, I just, I, I only transfer as, as little money as possible to fiat from, um, from my Bitcoin stack uh, to, to cover the, like the expenses needed. Um, but uh, there's uh, some mainstream um, chains of, of shops that uh, already accept Bitcoin and Lightning in South Africa, and you can do you can buy almost anything online using Bitcoin. And obviously, Bit Bit, Bit Refill is also huge here. So so um, and then now I'm with AirBTC. <laughs> um, if you get enough listings, <laughs> you can travel, uh, pay for accommodation with Bitcoin as well. So. So yeah, South Africa, uh, it's definitely possible to 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 live on on a, on a Bitcoin standard to to a very large extent. How long are you are you doing that with AirBTC and and trying to live on a Bitcoin standard? So I've been living, tried living on a Bitcoin standard about since 2022, um, and uh, I just launched AirBTC in the middle of July this year. So um, we're just a couple of months old, and um, things have been going quite well. The Bitcoin community has taken the launch very well. We've we had a lot of feedback and a lot of reaction um, from from fans and users, and um, yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping we can make this this project work. Absolutely, really, really cool. Um, one thing that one question that probably comes up in everyone's head is uh, is, is the volatility. Um, is it such a big thing once you actually go ahead or is it just like a fear that people have in their head and it's 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 like a, a nothing burger in the end of the day um i think that depends so so if you so what i do is um um the salary that i earn um goes directly into bitcoin so i mean you don't you don't you don't have to earn the physical bitcoin you can um you can use like um certain uh, uh um uh What's that? What's that um, company's name? Um, where you can get paid in Bitcoin? Um, you, you 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 give the invoice. Um, Bit refill is in my name. Is my head now? Yeah, but I mean, as you as your your salary comes in, you convert it directly to Bitcoin, and um, you just convert as much uh, as least possible to to fiat as you can, and then um, so so the volatility will only basically um, hinder you for that particular month. Um, and that hasn't really happened to me um, since I've been on the, living mostly on Bitcoin Standard. I, I haven't really lost money, if I can put it that way. But it definitely makes you feel richer and poorer as the Bitcoin goes up and down. I mean, uh, as, as the Bitcoin price um, decreases and my, my whole stack decreases and my net worth is worth a lot less than I start spending less as well and then as when bitcoin goes up then i feel richer and i spend more as well i mean we we're all still economic beings and that definitely has a huge impact um and that's why um, i also think for, um you know service such as airbnb to see when uh, when bitcoin goes up a lot say bitcoin reaches 200k um i think uh, a lot of more bitcoiners will feel rich and start spending a little bit more um, hopefully on their travel as well and just do you set the prices uh, like on, on the RBTC, all the prices are, as I saw, in Satoshis or so like set in Bitcoin? Uh, do, do they change? Like, do, do you change the, the, the prices of that uh, or the, the, the vendors are changing the price of that once Bitcoin like uh, goes up like 10%? I think like in the last year, Bitcoin went up like double or something like that. Yeah, that, we made that mistake. Um, so when I first launched... Um, I, I said I don't want um, even a fiat currency symbol on the website. We we want to be Bitcoin only, Bitcoin only. Um, 
to such an extent that um, we don't want anything even mentioning fiat. But unfortunately, that, that, that that's unworkable at this stage. So um, when people listed in their properties, put the prices in, and um, Bitcoin's price went up like 10% in two weeks. And suddenly, all the all the prices on the, on the whole website was 10% more expensive. So we um, I had to change that. So what we're doing now is... Um, um, we, we we're denominating the the prices in 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 fiat in dollars, and then just transferring that amount um, on the moment of payment um, to to Bitcoin, and then we also have a converter on the site which in in real time converts all the prices to to display Bitcoin, but that changes as Bitcoin price goes up and down. So. So like how that we work in practice is a host would say for arguments like a property is a hundred dollars per night they would type in hundred dollars and then we would change that price to sats which we display on the front end and as bitcoin's price goes up and down that amount of sats that's displayed goes up and down with with the bitcoin price but the at the end of the day the 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 the, the user or the 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 uh, the guest will will pay the bitcoin equivalent of hundred dollars at the moment of booking so in a way you are not in the face of bitcoin as a unit of account but bitcoin mm -hmm. as a medium of exchange till now because of uh the still of the volatility as 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 yeah. bitcoin price uh, increase of 10% yep. would make the the website significantly more expensive all of a sudden yeah or the or a decrease as well um and yeah. um i mean the volatility is often more than 10% in a month so that it is a huge problem. I mean, we would love to be Bitcoin only like that as well, but um, Bitcoin, it just unfortunately, it, it, it isn't a unit of account yet. So um, some people all have started using it, but it's, it's very problematic because you, you have to basically have ma mass adoption for that to work. So I think as fiat currencies fail and uh, people um, people start using Bitcoin like 90% uh, of the population, and then the fiat price of Bitcoin won't matter anymore. And then Bitcoin will become unit of the, the the most used user of account by default but i mean we're at least 10 years away from that hopefully 10 years maybe even probably longer um, do, do, do you think that's important that people spend their bitcoin right now yes so i mean i, I think it's very important um the one of the main um narratives that i'm pushing is uh, spend and replace and i think um a, 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 I've explained this uh, before, but a lot I've, I've had a lot of uh, um, Bitcoiners <laughs> criticizing that approach. So why would I spend my stack? It's all, uh, but you don't have to spend your stack. You can, as I said, you can spend and replace. So uh, whatever you would spend on 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 fiat or with your fiat, you just buy Bitcoin and then you spend that rather. And you have to, we have to get the Bitcoin circular circular economy as strong as possible as soon as possible. Um, for various reasons, but I mean, as a Bitcoiner, um, if, if you're not doing that, you, who's going to do it? Because if you're sitting with your Bitcoin in, in your hardware wallet, and five years from now, Bitcoin is 500,000, then you decide you want to sell or you want to spend your Bitcoin and there's no circular economy to spend it on. Um, I, I highly doubt that uh, hardcore Bitcoiners would want to transfer that Bitcoin that they stored offline <laughs> to to the local exchange and sell it for fiat and pay tax on that and then use that fiat again. And I, 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 that's, I don't think that's the plan. And I think most Bitcoiners just haven't thought that far ahead yet. But as soon as they do, they'll, they, they would realize that uh, spending and replacing your Bitcoin is is, is very important like your tax implications are interesting because like that's probably the thing that most people uh that's why they don't want to spend the bitcoin because they are fearful of the tax implication right now uh, i know for example in austria if you haven't bought your bitcoin before 2021 so if you bought the uh, bitcoin in, uh, starting i think february 2021 on all profits that you make from that uh, there's a 27.5 percent tax on that which is a really high one um and people are like oh like if i pay uh, i don't know if i got my Bitcoin like in, in, in that one month in September and then like a few months later, Bitcoin shoots up uh, two, two times, then I have to pay uh, the, the capital gains tax. Um, so so that, I think sometimes it's, it's, it's going to be hard or even it, or do you think that even if there's a tax implication, it's, it's still beneficial to, to completely be on a Bitcoin standard? Yeah, I mean, that's 
that's a tough one. But um, I mean, Bitcoin is supposed to be the peaceful revolution, in, and, and that's the whole idea. Um, I mean, as a, I mean, I, I think 90% of Bitcoiners out there um, would consider um, attacks like that um, um, unfair, and and I mean, that, that, that's the whole idea. That's, if if I buy a bicycle from you with my Bitcoin, there's no way that they can know. Um, so that, I mean, that's the whole idea. But, um, but that's one of the reasons that I'm in Bitcoin is to is to give a finger to the to to, to the regulators and to the to the rate seekers um, that's, that are trying to control us. So I mean, that that depends on person to person if you want to take that chance. I mean, I'm not saying you should do it, um, but um, the whole idea is to make it as hard as possible for these people to 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 enforce the, these these uh, ridiculous and insane tax laws and regulations and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's very true. Yeah, really cool. And um, you're also big on Austrian economics. And uh, even though I am in Austria, uh, I'm, I would not consider myself an Austrian economics um, expert. <laughs> I definitely uh, uh, love the, the, the theory and the, the idea behind it, but I'm far away from an expert in that one. Um, what is the main thing that you took away from Austrian economics uh, and and is that relating, is, is like that's the reason why you're now so uh, bullish on Bitcoin and also spending Bitcoin and being so far ahead of the curve? Yes, I'm, I mean, the, the, I think the main takeaway for, for, for most people who get into Austrian economics is um, it's, it's a huge eye opener when you first find out that uh, a currency doesn't need to keep on inflating for it to be successfully used as a currency in, in, in a given economy. Um, so, I mean, we're we're taught that inflation is normal, and that, it's not, and that in fact it's good for 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 you. <laughs> um, at, everyone has been taught that in school and in an economics class. Um, and when you first, but, but I mean, I, I think most people out there, as, at, at least if you have a, like a little bit of contrarian in you, um, you always kind of knew that that was bullshit. <laughs> I, I, I remember when I was at school, like taking fair economic classes, I I always thought, yes, but they, you know, they they're teaching this, but it just doesn't like something just doesn't feel right here for me. I mean, even at, like when I was 16 years old, that, that didn't just it didn't feel. I knew there was a fish in the, a, a snake in the grass there somewhere, and um, when I when I eventually found the Austrian economics, um, everything just started making a lot more sense. Um, but I mean, there's there's, there's so much uh, interesting stuff to learn, um, and uh, in the Austrian school, I mean, Mises's um, socialist calculation problem is it's, it's really interesting and cool. Um, and I mean, just the general um, like production theory and how you have to, you first have to accumulate, um, save up and accumulate capital, and then you can spend more time to to produce, uh, to, to make yourself more productive, um, might be more tools. I mean, that, that whole concept is, it's, it's really interesting to get into once you do. Oh, okay. But, but is it, uh, the learnings of Austrian economics that then, uh, made you so big on Bitcoin or was it the other way around that Bitcoin introduced to the Austrian economics? Um, well, I think both of them, to me, both of them came more or less at the same time. So, I mean, when you're studying, when you're studying Bitcoin, you're, you're studying Austrian economics. But I definitely found it through Bitcoin. So, um, I started to, to learn more about Bitcoin, and uh, Safedin's name came up, and um, I read the Bitcoin Standard, and I did these courses. So, so, so that always went hand hand in hand for me. I've, I've always been more like economically, um, entrepreneurial inclined than uh, technical. So, I mean, uh, uh, way back, like in before I would say like before 2016 you basically you had to have you you had to be like a shady super coder to be into Bitcoin basically um, because the, I mean the industry was so small there was just basically nothing else that you could do you could then so people started writing and a lot of cool stuff came out and I think Seyfedin was played a key role to introduce um, the Austrian school to Bitcoin although Satoshi also never mentions Austrian economics but a lot of the things that he mentioned in his writings does uh, closely relate to Austrian economics. Wait, wait he, he never mentions it? Oh, I thought he, I don't, he mentioned uh, I don't think he uh, specifically mentions the Austrian school. Uh, oh, I think he has a course on Austrian economics somewhere. I think the, that's no, why no, I'm confused. No, I'm talking about Satoshi. <laughs> um, oh, um, he never yeah, mentions the... Uh, yeah, he never mentioned yeah. the... 
The, uh, he never mentioned the Austrian uh, economics, the school of Austrian economics, but he does talk about. I mean, obviously, um, uh, creating, creating when you create a money that, um, that, that 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 can't be inflated, <laughs> you probably did was well versed in it. Yeah, absolutely, I thought you'd talk about Seifert, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, no, no definitely, no, he's, he's, he's <laughs> huge in Austrian economics. Uh, we, uh, we literally wrote the books. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That, that's why I was uh, for a moment very confused. I, uh, <laughs> I told you it, it, it's it's really interesting. Uh, I think uh, that there's the the white paper is uh, such a, a small, sleek thing, uh, and it introduces such a radical and such an amazing idea, which could completely change finances forever. And it's just like a few pages. <laughs> it, it's it's like it, it's pretty amazing that uh, one guy, girl, group of people, whatever, uh, is actually just like changing finances forever, uh, just by getting the ideas that were already there together in a in the right mix and just like putting it out there and then even leaving that thing uh, uh what was it one or two years later or three years later completely alone and saying like hey this uh, this this thing will work uh i will move on to other projects like that <laughs> that that story is uh i i still i still look forward to like a really big movie on that i feel like there has not been there's some documentaries there's some interesting stuff on there but there has to be some one big story or movie that like is, is really famous uh, coming out uh, that moment we didn't have to now i feel like <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely i mean if 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 bitcoin um, does what we think it will and becomes the the the, the next money to be used across the world for the next uh, however long like hundreds of years thousands of years even maybe um i mean in the future stuff like that will definitely start coming out I mean, especially the i mean i always want to compare it to the bible and <laughs> first the first people who started adopting it would, would be like the disciples in the christian bible you know it would be um they would they, they will be stuff written about them for for, for for generations to come yeah absolutely it's interesting uh, the <laughs> Um, I made some podcasts around uh, like con connecting or comparing even like Bitcoin to religions. Uh, and there's like a really deep rabbit hole around that. How, how, who was it? Yeah. Pastor Coin, I think, has the, the book uh, with, with uh, how was how's the book called? I forgot the, the name of the book, but Pastor Coin wrote like a Bitcoin yeah, and the I, Bible or something like that. I, I, I saw that book. It looks really cool. Yeah. I, I, I still wanted to get around to reading it. And. Um... Yeah, I I know Pastor Quinn and I follow him on Twitter. Um, it looks really interesting. But do you see a co connection there uh, with with religion, or is it just because uh, it's such a, a massive idea that, of course, the early group is kind of religious about it? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I see a lot of a lot of um, uh, sim similarities, not just between Christianity and Bitcoin, but 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 I mean, most a, a lot a lot of different religions. I mean. Um, I think uh, the, the the belief system around Bitcoin mirrors um, the the type of belief that you have to uh, practice to 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 to, to be religious. Um, and also, I mean, there's such a lot of similarities with the characters involved and Satoshi um, being like almost like this mythical figure. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, but. Bitcoin is all uh, uh, treating this. Um, I mean, if, if if you take certain types of Christianity. Um, certain, certain like Christian um, sects who go, who go out and um, I think it's the seventh day Adventist that they they go out and knock on people's door and try and convert them to Christianity. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot the same with Bitcoin. I mean, um, we also go out and uh, everyone as soon as they um, uh, like first discover Bitcoin and the, like their mind opens and they realize what's really what really is going on, they immediately want to go out and tell everyone they know about it. It's almost like uh, evangelical it's it's like um, they're filled with the spirit of Satoshi and they want to help other people find it as well so I mean there's a lot of similarities like that <laughs> and I think um, I think uh, there's still a lot of work to be done to compare Bitcoin to, to religion I mean there's a lot of uh, a lot of articles and books and stuff out there already but uh, I mean that's for a good reason absolutely yeah um, but coming a little bit back to the Austrian economics because I really wanted to get also in that topic with you as uh, you, you seem to be big on Austrian economics you have the the Twitter panel with Mises and and the people on there and you wrote Austrian economics um, for people and I know there are probably uh, some people in there that 
um, have heard about Austrian economics, but are not as aware of Austrian economics, uh, especially the new people in Bitcoin. Um, what is the basic theory of Austrian economics? How would you define uh, what, what Austrian economic uh, really means and what it is? So, I mean, Austrian economics to me um, is real economics. It's it, it, it starts at the, um, I almost sort of said at the bottom, like with, I believe, uh, uh, um, that everything that's created in economy is because of humans acting. So that's why one of the main books in Austrian economics from um, Mises is like greatest work um, is called Human Action. It's because um, the whole economy is made up of humans making decisions on a daily basis and acting upon those uh, decisions. While um, uh, and, and and everything then builds up from there, and um, it uh, connects and. Like, makes sense that they're trying to really figure out what's going on while, while the other schools of economics they just like that they think that the that the economy or an economy out there is just like a machine that you can basically control it's like knobs that they can turn in reality no market works like that um, every single day everyone makes uh, in the whole economy makes decisions and there's no way that you can um, uh, turn a knob or or or, or, or up a, a uh, interest rate or a tax, or, 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 and, and 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 control the economy to, to to the extent that you think you can. That's in fact impossible. So, I mean, um, every single thing that you that you, every single penny that you throw into that pool, um, trying to trying to 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 change something has a ripple effect through the whole um, market, through the whole economy, uh, which changes everything that you. Uh, it's impossible to to know what changes there are going to be with every single tweak that you try to make that's why it doesn't matter how good a fiat economist is the outcome is always bad um, when a government tries to intervene there isn't something like good intervention or bad intervention all intervention is bad because they're they're they're, they're just interfering with what the free market wants and what the free market wants is what always what is based um, in an economy it, it, it feels like that Austrian, or is it fair to say that Austrian economics is the natural state of economics and all, all the other schools are just trying to manipulate nature? I, I think I think that's true to, to, to a large extent, yes. Um, um, so, I mean, um, Menger um, came up with the, like the marginal revolution in, in like the 1870s. Um, so before that, no one, no one, as economics, the school of economics, uh, like economic thought in the world progress, th th one of the huge problems was so what is value? How do you value things? How do how do people value things? And before Menger, um, like the, the the best theory that was out there, or the most popular theory, was um, the cost theory or the and the labor theory of money, which is basically whatever something costs, that is what it's worth, or whatever labor someone put into it is what is worth. But which, if anyone goes and if you just rationally think about that it's it's complete bullshit uh, uh, um, just because you spend time on something with your labor doesn't mean it's worth anything I can go and dig a hole in my backyard the one day and I can then I can throw that hole uh, close it again the next day I would have worked two days but I that doesn't mean that what I what I did was uh, has any worth um, to anyone else or to me and the same with the cost theory um, just because something costs something to produce doesn't mean that it's worth whatever you put in to, to, to I mean, that, that that's just, I mean, it's impossible for someone to, re, to to argue against that. That's just basic logic. So, so Binger came up with, the, with, um, um, with his theory, which it was like a huge next step up for, um, for, for economics in general in the world. But um, the Keynesians and um, socialists, like they kind of, I want to say I just ignored that and went on in the previous um, 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 uh, way without without like uh, recognizing that that, that that exists and built on top of the theories with that which they had without taking taking uh, the module of the theory into into account. So so now um, so so Austrian economics is actually the only economics system that it, or, or, or thought school that has made any progress in the last 200 years um, because uh, they're just like accepting reality and logic while the other 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 forms of, of economics are, I mean at this stage I think you know socialist thought socialist economic thought is so ridiculous I mean if but but, uh, but no one, I, I don't even think anyone still um, takes that stuff seriously but um, at, at least Keynesians they um, 
they're just basically pandering to, to, to create more money. So the, the whole idea isn't to, to do anything good. The whole idea is to come up with excuses for your government and banks to print more money. That's that's what motivates them. If you go and have a look at who they have given um, the Nobel Prize to, um, that's always true. The, the, the Nobel Prize is always given to someone who came up with a new best excuse to print money. The last guy, like Bernanke, um, he was given the Nobel Prize because he, because when they got into the shit in 2008, he was the one that was able to come up with the excuse to print trillions of dollars and and save, uh, save save the the banking system. So um, yeah, if you want a Nobel Prize in economics, that's what you have to do. You have to come up with a a great idea for governments and banks to pr to print money. And you'll probably make it. <laughs> I, I, I laughed at a lot. Um... What was the the manga theory called the marginal revolution? What, what what is that exactly? If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much yeah so 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 the the the, the, the th you come up with the theory of marginal utility, which is, I mean, it's a little bit complicated to explain in detail on on, on, on the policy. It's easy to understand when you have graphics in front of you. Um, as but, but 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 basically, what what it is is every every next unit of any economic good that uh, that a human acquires has less value to him than the previous value uh, than the previous unit of the same good. So um, I think Menger uses horses to explain it. So when you when you uh, for, for arguments like when you're a, when you're a farmer and you have one horse you, that, that you would use that horse for your own transport, and then when you have two horses, um, you might use the second horse for, for 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 something that you wouldn't have used the first horse for. So that might be something like uh, plowing your fields or whatever. And then when you have three horses, you might lend one to your neighbor. But the the point of the of the theory is that that that, that third horse doesn't have that much value to you as a person as the first horse. Um, and it's like that with everything. So um, that is basically how that that explains how humans um, per perceive value. Is it that thing? Yes. Oh, sorry. So, so, it, so, yeah, exactly. That that's that's that, that that that's one of the tables. Yes. So so the, I mean that table will will explain to you how. You see, if you look at the top left, you have one unit of one good that has ten units of value. The second unit will have nine. Uh, 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 the second unit will have nine. The third unit will have eight. So, I mean, I think this looks, it's his cons consumption. So that, that would probably be some kind of food. So if you're really hungry and you have uh, 10 sandwiches, the first sandwich that you eat will be like 
I have massive value for you. Then you're a little bit more fool or whatever. And then I eat a second sandwich. And by the time you get to the fifth sandwich, you might be so full that you don't want even want that sandwich. It has zero value to you. Um, so that's the theory of marginal um, utility. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's like the that uh, that theory is like if you have. Uh, if you work like tw uh, t 15 years to be able to like um, afford one car that is maybe not the best car, but it brings you from A to B and you never had owned the car before, it's like this is like your biggest thing ever. Uh, but if you have like five Bugattis in your garage, like uh, a, a normal uh, medium-sized car is probably worth nothing for you. Is that that kind of uh, a theory for? Is, is that comparable to that? Yeah. Well, in 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 this, it will just be when you already have five Bugattis, the sixth one won't be won't have the as much value to you as as the first one, um, or the second, or the third, or the fourth one. So the 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 the, 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 the Theory of the value declines for you. The value declines of each of, for, for each extra unit you consume or or or, or have or get or get. Oh, that, that's uh, that's really cool. It's also yeah. And then, uh, yeah. yeah and, and then uh, I mean, he goes further, and then he, every human has a different scale of value, a marginal value for every for for different good for for every different good. So I might prefer like. The, in that it's like tobacco someone else might prefer alcohol or someone else might prefer i don't know whatever meat and we have the all, the, 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 the 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 scale will 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 change for every single person depending on what on his preferences so that that, that just also i mean if you, if 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 you go forward with that theory it explains why the market is so important to to be able to 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 know what every what humans want because there's no way to find out what humans want to consume if the market can't calculate that because it's it's impossible for a government to know what i what what, what i would choose tomorrow to, to consume because i don't even know what i'm going to choose tomorrow i might go to the shop and i might see something that I, you know so no person even knows what they what them themselves want will, will do tomorrow but now the government like in a socialist system wants to wants to decide what you are going to be doing not only tomorrow but even in a year from now which is impossible that's why and that makes it impossible to produce the right goods that the people want to consume so the the proper change in the production does it's, 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 it's impossible to 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 it's impossible to, to, for, for that to exist so um that's what um like mises's greatest work was on um sorry i just had a call now um so 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 yeah so the the socialist calculation problem then gets built on top of that and socialists basically it's 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 impossible for them to 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 get the factors of production straight that's why they uh, to get it accurately um so so it's um that's why socialism just can't work at all you just uh, wanted to say something about mises biggest contribution before the call yeah the 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 the, the, the socialist calculation problem um there's a, like a great video on that. Um, it's actually a great series that I would highly recommend on YouTube. It's called Masters of Austrian Economics. So the stuff that I just spoke about, you can go and check that out. So um, it's by it's that the YouTube account is Academic Agent, and it, um, so uh, I think there's six videos. The first one is Menger. The second one is um, Von von Bavarek. The third one is Mises. The third one I think is Hayek, and then it's Rothbard. Um, but the, it's 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 really good. You have to watch them in order. You start with Menger. Is is kind of um, is is Bitcoin kind of the final form of Austrian economics money? Is 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 it possible that that that's the last thing that we will ever need? Definitely, it's definitely possible. I mean, it's not certain. Who knows what will happen in the future? But I I definitely think that Bitcoin is the sly roundabout way that Hayek uh, talked about. Um, it's by far the best. Um, way that we've uh, as humans come up with um, um, thus far uh, the best money and the best way to circumvent the the current system so um i think i think definitely yeah i do do also agree with you it's also interesting when when we talk about austrian economics and all, all, all the things it it's a hard concept to to get around but the the the, the value is is not something that you can just like i feel like sometimes uh traditional economic people really want to get like oh there's like one 
calculation and that's how i calculate the price of of, of that one thing but for me like price and value like the value always subjective to it like maybe there's one guy that that pays for a, a painting that is for me worth exactly two dollars uh another guy pays two million for that because it has some uh, value or, uh, or he connects something with that so like i think that concept is is as is hard to grasp and that's why we need a free market because how can a person a committee uh, a calculator uh, an ai super intelligence uh, know what uh, what an uh, an art painting is worth or what like a sandwich is worth for someone and maybe the people completely shift to a different kind of diet uh, how, how will how will anyone predict that? Like it's 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 impossible for me. Even like then there are people saying like oh like but if there are supercomputers and AI and they have all the inputs, no, not even that. Like it's 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 for me <laughs> impossible to even think about predicting what human behavior will will do in the future. That's that's like how, how will you doing even begin to do that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, exactly. I mean. I don't even know what I'm going to eat tonight. <laughs> so I mean, how can someone else predict a future like that? It's it's it's, so, it's such a ridiculous concept. Um, but yeah, and um, how can someone think that they can if, if they don't even know what they themselves are going to do tomorrow? How can they think that they can predict what the rest, what someone else, never mind one other person, the whole whole of a country's economy will do? I mean, it's so it's so insane. <laughs> yeah, I can only laugh at it. Is it that that humans overestimate themselves? Uh, then like humans pay themselves as, as a bigger role as they actually have in the in the whole world? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think socialists they think highly of themselves. They think that they, I mean, they want to be that zero point one percent that's in control. No, no, no one when you when you speak to someone who's who's like a socialist, they never think that they are going to be the peasant that's being starved and it's going to go to the gulag in the system which is like 99.9 .9 of everyone in a socialist society they're always in their mind they're always the 0 0.1 who's going to be pulling the strings up there <laughs> and making these like really important decisions and stuff <laughs> yeah uh, it's, it's interesting uh, to, to think about that uh, it's um, it's so hard to like, uh, I, I just had elections in, in Austria. I mean, now it's uh, a few weeks behind me, but uh, it's, it's interesting when, when you have the, the socialists always argue, no, we have to, the tax is super rich and it's so unfair that they have as much. And it's like, no, it's not like <laughs> they have done for humanity way more uh, than someone else. And it, it's just like, we, we, we kind of have to accept that um, a, a free market allows of that that proof of work. Like if you put a lot of proof of work in something, you 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 should have a big reward on that because if there's no big reward on the other side, nobody is incentivized to do anything in, in, in the in the world because the big things exactly. are really hard. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people I feel like uh, don't get about it. But yeah, that's just me on uh, on, on 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 the politics side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, just to, to add to that, um, I mean, I think socialists, but I mean, Keynesians, general, but, like, I mean, people who are not into basically into Austrian economics, they're asking the wrong questions. So I mean, the question isn't what causes poverty. The, the question is what causes wealth. Um, everyone is born like naked and poor, uh, um, and then you start building from that. So, so society is inherently poor and hungry. Yeah, the question is nothing causes that. That is that that is the the base layer. Then on so so, so the question is how do we create the wealth? And I think that's that's where Austrian economics comes in as well because the the theories of production and stuff that they have. Um, explains that in, in in detail so you, you have to save before you're able to 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 to, to spend on, on 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 increasing your productivity to to buy a new machine if you're a baker to buy an oven um you have to you have to save before you can spend and then you can become more productive so that's that's how society builds wealth or from individual to societal level um and Keynesian economics kind of comes and turns that on its head, and um, um, with the like idea that, that that's not necessary. You you just uh, create the money out of thin air and spend it on whatever factors of production you want, and then it'll just work. But um, it doesn't. You're you're not creating more. You're you're only redistributing the wealth. 
and um, I think that I mean that's like a core concept that I think if more people can just understand that um, the world will be uh, better off. What do you think will happen to to debt and credits and loaning and uh, loaning and borrowing and all those things in a society where Bitcoin is the world reserve currency as uh, the the Bitcoin standard is kind of enrolled. So, I mean, my personal opinion on this is I think there will still be fractional reserve banking. And I I think although Bitcoin will be the largest currency and hopefully maybe a unit of account, I think there will still be other currencies in different jurisdictions. So around the world, I, I, I don't see the world as a like a one place that will either adopt Bitcoin or not. So different countries will I have different Bitcoin strategies. I'm sure it'll be outlawed in some countries. Other countries will embrace it. And um, the countries that do will just be much more successful and, and wealthy than the countries that don't. Um, and they will they'll probably start attracting like all the um, youngest, best young, young talent from across the world and uh, start outperforming countries who, who, who decide to go against it. But I mean, that's the two extremes, banning it and completely accepting it. But I mean, other countries will try and tax it like, uh, like your country. And then um, I think there will definitely be, uh, I think we're very close to that. I think in the next five years, we will see like people trying to do fractional reserve banking on top of Bitcoin. Um, as soon as bankers get involved, that, that they're going to try and uh, like give, give some kind of Bitcoin coin without the reserves, but you can spend it. And then they're going to create more of that than they have almost like FTX and all that kind of stuff. But just on a, on a, on a, on a legitified level with, 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 with with your country's fraction, your country's central bank um, involved, and um, they will probably some of them will probably have some some success, um, and um, some of them will lend out too much and fail, but um, I definitely think it's possible. Um, and also, I think they will be because like the on the gold standard, the the, the goal of a banker, it's 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 still um, and loans and um, deposits, it's still it's, it's still important. So so I mean I think the quote is um, the banker plays an important role in society because it takes the capital from those who are unable or unwilling or unwilling to use it in production and um, distributes it to to those who are. So that is a, still a valuable service that, that a bank provides. Um, so, so, so I think in the future there will be like some kind of a, um, a, a, a like a full reserve bank where you can give your 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 Bitcoin to them, and that will be like approved by the government or the central bank or whatever, and they will then lend that money out and give you like say whatever one percent interest, and they they will take zero point five. And um, that's where it worked on the gold standard side of thing. I think that'll definitely, because there will still be people who, who want to earn interest on the Bitcoin. There's, there will still be people who want to uh, borrow in order to produce. Um, the, I mean, the, the society and an economy needs that function to work properly um, um, for, you know, for the reasons that I just mentioned. Yeah, really cool. It, it's... Um... It, it's really interesting when we think about how Bitcoin has the world, uh, how this looks like and, 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 and what the implications of that are. Um, but before that, um, it, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of scary for me sometimes to think about that, but we have now massive institutional adoption where like uh, the ETFs are buying a lot of Bitcoin. There are big corporations that buy a lot of Bitcoin and they not always custody themselves, they often custody it with uh, like Coinbase and other um, um, people and other institution. Uh, it's like, do you feel or that there is a, a chance of like a 6102, like uh, in confisca confiscation of the Bitcoin that are on the, those centralized exchanges, especially when the US dollar is in danger or is uh, coming to more of a hyperinflation scenario where the state is like, hey, we have all the Bitcoins there, like, just let's just take them and uh, calm down <laughs> the economy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that it's just a matter of time. I, I mean, it's... Um... If you if you're not in control of your own coins, it's it's not yours. I mean, there are some exchanges that I personally would do, like and trust more than others. But I mean, if you don't have your own Bitcoin um, in your own uh, custody, you, you 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 you're walking that that risk. So I mean, you're. Uh, I, I think it's a matter of time before, especially like the ETFs and Coinbase. 
I think those coins are. I think they're going to be confiscated <laughs> sooner or later. Really? Like you, you're not saying even that's a question, it's just a question of time then? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I, I think so. I mean, they did it, like you said, they did it in the 30s with gold. Um, why wouldn't they do that? If they're in trouble, they need the, they need the, the, the it's, it's happened many times before. Um, it's, it's, it'll probably happen again. They're all in trouble. <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> the, the, the expenditure and the amount of the debt is so next level. Uh, uh, it's just a matter of time before before we have a, another huge crisis, whether that's triggered by economic factors or, or by war. And then they have excuses to, to, to do basically anything they want. And the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to take the, bet, take the Bitcoin. Yeah, it's a... But, but this is only for me implications on the Bitcoin that are there and not really Bitcoin itself. Um, are we beyond the point of where Bitcoin actually gets captured or destroyed or whatever or manipulated by, by the state's fairs like Bitcoin beyond the reach already of, of any uh, central institution? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think we'll be cross that like a while ago. I mean, if, if they try and do anything, we can just like you can have a we can fork back without them. Whatever, the, whatever, basically the, the the community around Bitcoin decides to do, um, w w that will happen. So, so I mean that, that that's um, that's that that's why it's it's impossible to to, to stop it because it, it's it's a it's a it's a community project where no one is in control. So, so. It, I think people who think that it's possible to to do that don't have a complete understanding of how of of, of how, the, how this actually works. Absolutely, I full heartedly agree with you. Um, you have something else in the in the bio of, of yours on, on on Twitter. You have written also meat in there, <laughs> which is an, which oh, is an yeah. interesting uh, <laughs> interesting thing. Uh, what has meat to do with uh, Bitcoin and Austrian economics? Well. Um, I think I think Saifedean has also like brought the carnival diet and meat like really in, into uh, 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 like into the Bitcoin space. I almost want to say, I don't think, uh, but I think um, like the uh, low time preference um, eating um, is is uh, ties in with like certain um, Austrian economic views. And but 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 for me personally, um, so I'm a Afrikaans and. Um, uh, our culture in South Africa has a large history um, of eating meat, so it's uh, meat is huge in our culture. Um, we eat meat every single day. Like my grandmother uh, grew up on a farm in the Karoo, uh, which is a, like an arid area in South Africa. Um, it's almost like the Wild West. If I can, it's like a semi-desert area, and everyone there is, um, farms with sheep. And um, I mean, those people, my grandma and her parents. They grew up eating eating um, like lamb or sheep meat like three times a day, morning, <laughs> morning, um, um, afternoon, and night, um, and then sometimes they would eat some vegetables with it, sometimes not. And um, I mean, all my grandparents that grew up like that, lived like that, they all reached like above the age of ninety-five with very minimal um, medical complications. So I mean, then suddenly the um, the mainstream medical and media comes and tells us that that's uh, bad for you now, and I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> I have, I literally, I literally have four, four grandparents who, <laughs> who, who who ate like that, and and they never had any medical problems. I, 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 the, 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 what you're telling me and what I'm seeing in real life just doesn't make sense. All, all those anecdotal, um, there's there's a lot of that those anecdotes out there, um, especially in South Africa and in our culture. So yeah, but I mean, just generally, I, I just love um, eating and preparing meat, um, lamb and beef and game, and um, I prefer my meat with as much fat on it as possible. <laughs> I, I, I love that a lot. Um, very cool. And before we come to the to, to the end, um, I have one more question, uh, and that's probably impossible to answer. But how would you define a, a Bitcoin? Is is uh, how, how would you? Uh, what, what are the common uh, personality traits that that uh, that a Bitcoiner has. So, well, first I want to say, um, I mean, I, I get this a lot so when I when I tweet from my personal account of, or, or or from um, the Airbnb account that I mentioned Bitcoin is this or do Bitcoin is that. Then I always get the question, what is a Bitcoiner? And um, I mean, I've and I like to use the um, I like to think that like every everyone 
who self-identifies as a Bitcoiner is one. So, I mean, if you are, are getting orange pulled or got orange pulled tomorrow and you decide, no, I'm going to be a Bitcoiner now, no matter how little you know about Bitcoin, if I think if you self-identify as one, then um, to me, that makes you one. Um, I mean, even if... Um, I, I mean, yeah, I have to at least be honest about it. <laughs> but, but, but I think so. But, but I mean, working with Bitcoin is at at Airbnb the last uh, this last couple of months and actually like over the last couple of years on um, that have been part of the community. I mean, lo- I think low time preference and um, honesty and uh, like a no bullshit kind of um, attitude. Uh, I was almost want to say. Uh, uh, if you if you think about Karen like behavior in 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 that meme, um, uh, Bitcoin is almost like whatever the opposite is of that, and um, and then also um, a lack of entitlement. You know, I, I think Bitcoiners want to actually work and do the proof of work before they get a reward. Otherwise, that reward isn't sweet to them. Um, oh. I've, I, I, I've, I mean, I've, I've seen that a lot. I mean, I'm with myself as well. You don't want cheap praise for anything. And you never, Bitcoiners don't, don't generally take take that as well. <laughs> kind of, um, you, if, you, you, I mean, you can only be proud of something that you did if you if you really did the hard work and, and achieved something. Um, and I think, yeah, um, I think Bitcoiners have a, a lot of uh, those kind of traits. Interesting. Yeah. I, I like it a lot how you, how you describe it. Uh, and I think also the, the thing of like, a Bitcoin is one that describes himself as a Bitcoin and that's very true uh, because we always try to like put on that like, oh yeah, I, because I eat meat, uh, all Bitcoiners have to eat meat. Uh, it's like we portray something on that and I think that's uh, that can be it can be um, not dangerous, but it can be uh, non-productive for for the Bitcoin community overall. When someone mm-hmm. that eats raw raw vegan comes to the Bitcoin place and like, oh, like, oh, I guess I cannot adopt Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. I mean, it's it's. I think I mean that, that's important. I mean, people just like they self-project uh, a lot uh, in general, not just Bitcoiners or, or, or in a particular group. But I mean, that, that that's one thing. You, if you're into Bitcoin and you like meat, now you think that everyone who's into Bitcoin must be into meat. Is and that's natural to to feel that way. But um, it's not. I mean, that's not true. Bitcoin doesn't care if you what you eat. <laughs> um, Bitcoin doesn't care what your race or your sexual preferences is. Um, uh, anyone can use it to, uh, I mean I think we're just very lucky that we're alive at a time where we can start using it um, I always want to say I want to just say everyone can, everyone can, is, is able to use it but unfortunately people like before 2013 was very hard to use Bitcoin before it existed so we're very lucky to, to be alive in a timeline where um, we were able to to use Bitcoin yeah, yeah. very very true really cool um I have one question to ask all of my guests, and the question is, what can we learn from you besides uh, Bitcoin? And I will add for you also Austrian economics. <laughs> so what, what can we <laughs> learn from you besides that? Um, well, I think, I mean, this also just ties in with the Bitcoin uh, ethos um, in general, <laughs> but um, I, I think like taking care of your body health-wise is really, um, really um, important. And um, I'm, I've, I've been in a health and a fitness journey throughout my life where I've tried almost everything there is. And um, the the one thing that I've that really stood out to me, which I think is like underrated, and I think it it can it it will become it will still become a, like a, a, a Bitcoin thing in the future, is is calisthenics, um, like body weight exercises. It's um, it's a, that really stuck with me. It's uh, I find that much much better um, on ver- various different levels than go, doing weight training in the gym um, or other um, the fitness or exercise methods for that for that matter. But um, I think um, I, I think uh, I think that's going to be that. that that might be something that, that that's still going to be a meme in the Bitcoin space in the next uh, couple of years. Yeah, weightlifting seems to be now the the really popular thing, and I do actually yeah. both of them. Like I, I try to do uh, calisthenics, and after calisthenics, do one or two exercises with weightlifting. Uh, it's uh, like. Uh, I, I get I get com- compared a lot with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I'm not, nowhere close. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I struggle to go like three, four times uh, per per week into the gym and try to keep uh, 
my body at least in shape. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think calisthenics is a really nice. Like uh, sometimes I see people in, in in the gym that do the calisthenics, and I'm like just impressed on the level of control they have over their own body. Uh, that's that's something really really um, cool and something that I want to get more into. And uh, I love that you brought that in the podcast because it's uh, it's a good good way of of improving your overall mobility, your overall strength, and your overall yeah, uh, just like body movements and, and and that stuff. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's 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 it. Anyone can literally do it anywhere across <laughs> across the world. No matter where you are, you can you can you type into YouTube calisthenics right now. Um, do no matter what, how, how unfit or fat you are, there would be a progression for you to start with <laughs> to, to start doing push-ups and pull-ups, all that stuff. It's 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 it, it, so it scales like all the way to someone who's uh, like a. The people on my 600 pound life can start, can start doing it, and even if you're like super fed you, you, and 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 you're already very very um, um, strong in, the, in with doing weights, so that you you can slot in and start doing calisthenics, and there's like really cool movements to work up to, like uh, I mean just Google uh, planche or front lever. I mean to be able to do something like that is is, is incredible feat of strength for anybody, and it's something to work up to. I mean it's it's it, it gives you something to work to. So when you're doing weights, you're basically your only um, reward is ever ever is to, to, to you you're gonna add on another five kg plate, and then next time you're gonna and then, the, and then the number will go up. But in calisthenics, you have like I mean I remember the first time when I was able to do a, a muscle up. I was so ecstatic. I worked for a year to be able to do that, and it's a, like a huge achievement that you can work similar to running a marathon or whatever. So it's something that you can aim towards like a goal and that you can reach which is i think it's really important to keep the motivation up um with with exercise absolutely really cool and calisthenics is something that uh you don't need a gym membership at least if the weather is good in your area because there are uh, in most cities i saw there is somewhere a calisthenics park where, where you can go and just like do it uh, and and save the satoshis and and put them into bitcoin <laughs> it's, it's exactly yeah or you can it. you yeah, okay, you can pause this podcast right now and drop and do a couple of push-ups or, or, or air squats. <laughs> so it's completely free. True, yeah, you don't even need the kind of stakes box. You can just like do something at home and a lot of things you can even do at home. I mean, of course, the whole hanging things and all the things, the, it's, it's, it's nice to have something uh, from, from the ceiling. And I unfortunately have a hard time doing that at home as I'm two meters tall. It's like it has to be hanging really high. <laughs> 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 but, uh, it, it, it would be it would be cool yeah really cool perfect then we have an entertain in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is and oh, your wow. question from the previous guest is what is the biggest behavioral change since you adopted a bitcoin uh standard within yourself wow that's an interesting one um i think i think i've become I've become um, more hardworking and um, goal orientated and um, I've, I've been able to focus more on the things that are that, that's really important so I think the general in general to sum it up I, I think that's just like what low time preference does to you so if you start thinking long term um, the changes of the way you you, 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 you you, you act um, over the short term because you, you always have that, like that long term view in in, in mind, um, and I mean there's a lot of things that then that then automatically fall in place, and I think I, I mean I think I think a lot of Bitcoiners have had that experience, uh, but, but but definitely true in my life as well. Really cool, yeah. Uh, I can relate to that uh, a lot. Really cool. Yeah, then thank you so much, Andre, for, for, for being on the show. Before I let you go, where can people find you, ask you questions, and read more about you? Uh, I'm very active on X um, on my personal account. So it's Andre and then a V. So Andre V. Uh, uh, or you can just type in Andre van Heer, and I think I'm the only one with that, with that, uh, with that name. Um, and then uh, obviously, airbtc.online is uh, the website. Um, where you can go on and list your property or book, and um, it will be also as a Noster um, and a Twitter uh, handle or X handle, which you can just uh, it's Airbnb, so you can just type it in, it should come up, you should find it uh, like quite easily. Thank you so much for, for being on, for taking the time. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye.
Cheers.